Two Parties of Capitalist Imperialists Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix They don't just call Democrats communists and Marxists in order to attack Democrats. They do it to disappear the entire giant expanse of political spectrum that exists to the left of the Democratic Imperialist Democratic Party. They want you to think that's as far left as it gets. Democrats refer to themselves as the left for the same reason. Both mainstream factions work to shrink the Overton window into a tug-of-war between Republican capitalist imperialists and Democrat capitalist imperialists, between two opposing factions of neoliberal neocons. The problem with the belief that we must start new social media companies because the U.S. government keeps infiltrating the popular social media companies is that it does nothing to confront the huge problem that the U.S. government keeps infiltrating popular social media companies. Until we turn and squarely address the problem that the world's most powerful government keeps infiltrating the popular online platforms we use to communicate with each other in order to interfere in our communications, they're just going to keep doing it. Their actions need to be stopped. Sure, You can keep starting new social media companies in response to this problem, but they'll either remain small platforms without any meaningful influence, or they'll be overpowered by the U.S. government and made to facilitate U.S. information interests. That's the real issue. To accept that we can only have unrestricted political speech on small platforms is to accept that we can have free speech as long as no one hears us, that we can say whatever we want as long as we speak it into a hole in the ground. Starting new platforms isn't the solution to this problem. The solution to this problem is loud, forceful, aggressive opposition to the U.S. government interfering with the way people communicate with each other on the Internet, until they stop. This is actually very possible to do, because the U.S. government needs to preserve its image as an upholder of liberal values. If that image starts to deteriorate as public awareness grows that they are working to censor worldwide political speech, their behavior will need to change. So what we can do is work to grow public awareness and opposition to the U.S. government's increasingly intrusive operations in Silicon Valley. That's a much better use of our energy than self-isolating our dissident speech into small online platforms that have no mainstream impact. U.S. government agencies would love it if we'd all self-quarantine ourselves into obscure margins of the Internet where we can't infect the mainstream herd with wrong think. We'd be doing their work for them. It's better to stay on the largest platforms and work to open some eyes. China's going to invade Taiwan. What? How do you know? Well, we're pouring tons of weapons into Taiwan... And we know we'd definitely invade if the Chinese were doing that in Cuba. Ah, so you've got some solid intelligence then. I'm often accused of praising or supporting Russia or China, which is funny because I never actually do. People are just so accustomed to being told the U.S. and its allies are pure good and its enemies are pure evil that anything outside this looks wildly imbalanced to them. It's possible to saturate a civilization so thoroughly with propaganda that the entire normal baseline act of focusing one's criticisms on the world's most powerful and destructive power center looks freakish and suspicious in contrast to what you're accustomed to consuming. In reality, criticizing the U.S. centralized empire with appropriate and proportional forcefulness and focus looks like treasonous support for enemy nations for the same reason sunlight would seem shocking and abrasive to someone who's lived their whole life in a cave. We do not live in a free society. We live in a highly controlled society where we are psychologically manipulated into mental homogeneity in service of the powerful. Criticizing foreign countries for not having freedom like ours helps make our own society even more controlled. We're told we're freer than other countries so that we won't see how unfree we are. You can't look down your nose at countries like China or North Korea and still clearly see how controlled and homogenized your own country is. 
you can't celebrate your freedom while still lucidly understanding your oppression. The illusion of freedom is precisely where the reality of our imprisonment hides. We've been conditioned to mistake being able to choose between two fake political factions for political freedom, to mistake being able to regurgitate what we've been propagandized into saying for free speech. People say, I'm free because where I live I can say, do, and experience anything I want. But that's not true. You can't. You can only say, do, and experience what you've been conditioned to want to say, do, and experience by the mass-scale psychological manipulation you've been marinating in since birth. You can do what you want, but they control what it is that you want. There's no better illustration of how unfree we are than the way Westerners all think the same thoughts about how unfree people are in countries the Western Empire just so happens to disapprove of. We bleat in unison. I'm so glad I don't live in a tyrannical, homogenized country like China, where people aren't free to be individuals. We won't be free until our minds are free. Until all of us, not just the lucky few who happen to stumble outside the narrative matrix, are able to shape their own perspectives based on truth rather than on what benefits the powerful, until we are able to become true individuals.